for joining me on the story. Yes. Yes. I think you would like this. Thank you. And to Aunt Anne for being so encouraging and a great mentor. in Gaelic in uh, Perthshire, Scotland, um, by a man who was told the story from his father and his grandfather, who in turn were told from their father and grandfather. And uh, the highlands of Perthshire are directly in the heart of Scotland, and that there's wind-swept plains, and it's full of bogs, and just this rugged, beautiful Scottish landscape. Um, and there was once a harper who would travel the towns of the region and he would play his harp and he would tell stories and he would bring um, news from the various villages as he went. And he was about to make his way to the village of Athol and he'd made the journey many times before. It was about this time of year so he knew that he wouldn't quite make the journey before it got dark but he traveled the highlands before and he knew his way so he wasn't worried about it. Uh, he gathered his pack, and he gathered his harp, and he wrapped himself in a warm, warm cloak, and he set on his journey. And he'd been traveling many hours, he stopped, he took a break for lunch, admired the landscape and the animals, and uh, then he continued. He watched the sun go down over the distant mountains, and he, there's a chill in the air. But then the moon came out, and it just illuminated the landscape. And he noticed, over in the distance that there were some shapes just pretty far away moving. And as he walked, he noticed they were gradually getting closer. And then he heard it. Now, in San Diego, we have coyotes. And coyotes kind of have this yippy howl, right? But a wolf's howl is deep and blood curdling, And that is what he heard. And he realized that traveling toward him was a path of wolves. So he started moving as quickly as he could towards the town. It was still a ways away. Um, and he noticed that there was this great big stone in front of him. And he thought, well, if I can make it to the stone, I can climb on top and maybe the wolves will pass me by. So he moved as quickly as he could. He clambered up the stone and made himself just as small as he possibly could. And he heard the howls and they were still getting closer and closer. And he saw beneath him, there was about a dozen black wolves, and in the center was this gray wolf with this piercing blue eyes. And they were snarling, and they were, they were angry, and they were, the, the gray one was trying to make its way up the stone. And he thought, okay, well, uh, maybe I can use my harp, I can make a sound like to frighten them away. And he tried, and unfortunately for the harper, I um, mean, just about everything sounds good on a harp, so it wasn't scaring him very much at all. But um, the gray one was continuing to make its way, and it was finding the footholds and coming up, and he knew like, this was it. So he, he thought, well, if this is it, I am going to go out doing what I love. And he began to play. Him. And 
it got close and it looked at him again with those piercing blue eyes and the wolf held out his paw. And the harper noticed that in the middle of the paw was this great thorn and the paw was infected and it looked very painful. And he thought, well, does the wolf want me to pull out the thorn? And he kind of inched a little closer and he grabbed the thorn and it didn't come easily and he pulled it out. And, and the wolf acknowledged this and left the rock and the pack left. And it took a few moments for the harper to realize, I'm going to make it. it, it they, they're gone. And he climbed down and he continued to the town of Apple where he told his story to everyone who would listen. <laughs> and he stayed there for a while before continuing on and traveling. And he came back to Apple a few months later. And he was standing in the square and he was playing his harp. And he noticed that there was an elderly gentleman dressed in very fine clothes who was watching him play. And the gentleman came up and said, Harper, one such as yourself who travels around, I am sure you have such great stories. What is the wildest thing, craziest thing that has ever happened to you? <laughs> the Harper knew the story to tell and he, he told him of the wolves and the thorn and the harp and the stone. And the gentleman kind of nodded. And he held out his hand. And he said, Harper, do you remember me? And Harper looked at his hand, and there was this great big scar in the middle of his hand. And with his, he didn't know what to say. And the gentleman, with his piercing blue eyes, said, Harper, there was a time I, I was a wicked person. I devastated lives. I I used my power to people who had none and without remorse, fa individuals, families. And one day I passed the wrong person. And she placed this one and she enchanted me. I was cursed and I turned into a wolf. But Piper, I was a wolf for so long that I forgot my life. I forgot about my humanity. But when I heard your music, you called it back to me and I remembered who I was. And I just, I wanted to know. I, I wanted to thank you. And with that, you disappeared and into the crowd. And it touched the river. And he continued to tell the story of the harbor story.